Bismillah. Once upon a time, there was a princess who, like all princesses, was very capricious. King his father and queen his mother adored him and answered all his requests. Even the most extravagant, the princess had an irrepressible love for the sea and everything she lived there. The king then built within the castle itself a huge pool where he brought all the spices of fish and shells. The architect who designed the little wonder also built an underground passage through which the sea and the basin communicated. The princess inured her and was content to admire the fish mowing in the old glass basin. One day, a fisherman who had done bad fishing picked up on the shore a seahorse which appealed to him to be of good size. It is providence that put you on my way. Will present it to the king who will give it to his daughter to enrich his collection. I will get some money. Despite his insistence, the king dismissed him, finding the catch negligible. But just then, the princess entered and saw the seahorse. She immediately decided, I want it, I want it. The king yielded and paid the fisherman handsomely. The princess put her seahorse in its natural element. Since then, she had spent hours watching it evolve. Nothing could divert her from uh, this spectacle, not even the other fish. This is show she real how she realized that her seahorse disappeared regularly for a long time and then returned. She could not understand his repeated absence. Disappointed, she locked herself in her room, looking out her window. She saw a bigar pass by who took advantage of the windfall to ask him for charity. Immediately, the capricious princess amused herself by throwing coins at her. One of the coins rolled to the sea and swept away by the waves. She escaped to Bagar, who followed her furiously. He sank into the sea and discovered a corridor. He rushed in and ended up in a richly decorated room. He heard footsteps and just had time to hide, then he saw beautiful mermaid and seahorse the size of a real horse arrive. The mermaid touched the head of the seahorse and the latter turned into a handsome young man. The mermaid and the young man sat down to the table and at the dishes served. The beggar who had seen everything had heard of the princess's pain at seeing his seahorse disappear. It may be that of the princess. I will talk to him, she will make me a rich man, for sure. The beggar went to find the princess and talked to him about what he had seen at the bottom of the sea. At his request, he agreed to drive her under the sea. Everything went as planned. The princess saw the seahorse leave its shell to transform into young man. The girl stealthily slipped into the empty shell and waited. When the young man returned to his shelter, he found the princess there. Surprised, he asked her what she was doing there and without waiting for an answer, he tried to protect her. He took her out of the sea and in the crystal basin he told her that he was under the domination of the mermaid who would kill her if she knew. He also told her that the mermaid loved to sing and loved music above all else and that she always wore a flower in her hair. It was in this flower that she had lacked the young man's life. The young princess immediately began to learn music and went to a reef to play continuously. The siren heard the air blown by the wind and came to say to the princess, Play again and again. 
the princess was playing her instrument and the mermaid was singing. The princess stopped and the mermaid under the spell of the music promised, play again and I will give you what you want. I will play then and you will give me the flower which is in your hair. Take the flower, she is yours, play again please. The mermaid threw the flower and the waves were rising to carry it away. The princess jumped into the water and started swimming to catch her. The princess swam, swam and soon ran out of breath as the flower still faded away in the rough sea. Help was called and the king's entire fleet sailed. The princess without anyone's help caught up with the flower. She was so far away that she no longer had the strength to return. It was then that the prince, who had regained his human appearance, carried it to shore, saying to him, You saved my life, I save yours, but I cannot live without you because my life is now yours. They got married, we had a party that lasted seven days and seven nights, they lived happily and had beautiful children, one of whom inherited the mother's passion for marine life.